Hi, my name is Marcus Babst and I'm professor in biology at the University of Utah. And the reason for this uh, brief video clip is to describe to you the work which uh, led to two publications in 2002 in developmental cell. Uh, they, these two papers described the characterization of escort 2 and escort 3 and together with the third publication in cell they were the first uh, to show the basic function of uh, these protein complexes in protein trafficking and also uh, they were the publication which defined the name escort for the first time. So uh, this work started originally in 1995 when I joined as a postdoc uh, the lab of Scott Emmer. And at that time, Scott had uh, still a bunch of uh, mutant in his freezers, which were defective in the delivery of cargo from the Golgi to the back hole. So I started to work on a, a subclass of mutants, which were called class E VPS mutants. And uh, these mutants uh, all had a very similar phenotype. So it was clear they all uh, were working, all these gene products were working together at the same trafficking step. Uh, I started working first on an ATPS called VPS4 and from that work uh, it became clear that what VPS4 was doing was regulating the assembly and disassembly uh, of other class E VPS proteins on the endosomal membrane. So further biochemical analysis then uh, showed that all these class E VPS proteins are part of large protein complexes which uh, we then later called escort 1, escort 2, and escort 3. So at that time, we didn't have really, uh, I didn't have really a, an activity or f a, a particular function for these protein complexes. The only thing I knew was they were somehow localizing to endosomes and uh, affecting protein trafficking at that step. So this changed when uh, Gregor Orisi, a new postdoc, joined the lab. And he was interested in studying the MVBs in yeast. And at that time, it was not even clear that yeast ex uh, had MVBs. And he showed that they indeed existed, and he also characterized a cargo uh, that was sorted through the MVB pathway. So Greg was uh, my baymate at the time, and we discussed often uh, the endosomal trafficking uh, functions and the and the, this new MVB pathway which Greg was studying and so it took us only about a year till we finally realized that we were actually working on the same project and that the protein complexes which I identified uh, were actually the ones which were responsible for the formation of multivesicular bodies. So of course as soon as we had a function Scott immediately assisted on naming these protein complexes. And uh, it took a while and uh, Scott got a little bit uh, impatient, so he put a price tag out, $50, to get for the best name. And uh, I was lucky, the lucky one who claimed that price and found this uh, abbreviation for endosomal sorting complex required for transport. So after we finally found the name for our protein complexes, uh, we could now focus again on trying to uh, figure out what these protein complexes exactly were doing and how they were able to sort cargo into the MVB pathway. And this work was uh, uh, mainly done by a friend of mine, David Katzman, which was a postdoc at the time in Scott's lab. And he will tell you uh, more about this work in his part of the video clip. Hello. My name is Dave Katzman and I'm uh, joining you today from the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. And I wanted to just uh, add a little bit to the story that Marcus was just telling you about the, uh, the collaboration that we enjoyed when we were postdocs in the laboratory of Scott Emmer, uh, where we performed the initial characterization of the, the escorts. <clears throat> and my interest in this story really came from uh, an interest in how it was that specific cargos were, were entering into this pathway while others were not. And at the time, it seemed pretty clear that ubiquitin was playing some role in targeting 
um, receptors into the MVB pathway for their degradation. But it wasn't really clear uh, where ubiquitin was playing that role because <clears throat> it wasn't possible to distinguish uh, endocytosis from subsequent endosomal targeting and even targeting into the MBP pathway. And so it was the, the model cargo, carboxybiphthidase S, that, that Marcus mentioned, mentioned uh, brief, briefly, which really uh, helped resolve that issue because it doesn't transit the cell surface. And so the demonstration that ubiquitin was required for its um, targeting specifically into the MBB pathway was the formal demonstration of where um, of, of a role for ubiquitin in uh, multivesicular body targeting. Um, now at almost exactly the same time uh, we knew that uh, the class EVPSs were playing a role in targeting cargos into the MVP pathway and we knew that there was probably some role for ubiquitin in this process even before the formal demonstration using CPS. Um, and so it was with some uh, delight that we noted a uh, ubiquitin uh, E2 variant or UEV domain within VPS23 and I undertook a, a mutagenic approach to look for loss of function mutations within this domain with, with the goal of, of finding a role for that domain in, in this process. And um, so this screen identified uh, just such a loss of function mutation within the UEV and a subsequent analysis revealed that indeed VPS23 was capable of binding to ubiquitin um, and that the mutant form thereof was not capable of, of doing this and uh, that defect correlated with the loss of function targeting into the MVP pathway and combined with the data that ubiquitin was both necessary and sufficient for MVP sorting really launched the, uh, the model that ubiquitin is playing a role in targeting cargoes into the MPP pathway and that ubiquitin binding domains within the escorts are responsible for recognizing those uh, that modification and targeting those cargos into the pathway and you know so in a lot of ways this was an extremely satisfying set of experiments between the identification of ubiquitin ubiquitin binding domains the definition of the escorts themselves and um, you know we, we were really pretty confident that the because these were conserved throughout evolution that they were going to have relevance for the downregulation of a variety of receptors, not, not merely this particular yeast hydrolase, and that's borne out over time. But what, what, we, what we didn't see uh, coming that has also been extremely uh, satisfying is the, the role of the escorts in a variety of cellular processes ranging from the budding of retroviruses to cell division, protection from neurodegeneration, and um, an increasing number of of disease states and so um, it's been uh, it's been a fun and uh, interesting uh, ride thus far and uh, with that I'd like to thank you for uh, listening today and I'd like to thank Debbie Sweet for the opportunity to uh, discuss this